G'day everyone and welcome to this special, very talky version of Fix It Fingers Woodworking. Today is the 2nd of October 2020 and it's my second YouTube slash woodworking anniversary. If you'd like to know a bit more about that, then go back to the 2019 version where I'm going to cover a lot of what I did then, but a year on. So with two years experience under my belt, we're going to be talking about the projects and the videos that I've done, a bit of YouTube experience, and then right at the end, I'm going to do a second year shop tour. Now, Sumo, the ideas man that he ever is, has decided that there were quite a few of us coincidentally putting out shop tour videos this spring here in Australia. And so we're going to do a playlist under the hashtag of Aussie Workshops 2020. Anyone is free to jump on. And as long as there is a shop tour part of the video, it's all appropriate. If you'd like to skip through what's probably going to be 10 or 15 minutes of chat, then I will put a timestamp for you and you can just go straight to the end where I'll take the camera for a walk around. But for the moment, this bit is really for the people who are interested in hearing my story and following along with what has been going on the past 12 months and then a little bit of my plans for the future. It is going to be a bit chatty as I'm warned. I've got a whole page of notes which I'm going to constantly refer to. I apologise, but there was too much information to store in the old noggin. Alrighty, right in front of me is my brand new camera, my Lumix FZ300, I believe it is, which I actually purchased back in March, gave one trial, and then put back in its box, because quite frankly, my workshop was far too dark in order to get a high quality picture with it. The phone did a better job. So I have been, until today, filming on the phone. But luckily, my last project, which I just finished, the workshop lighting, hallelujah, let there be light, has allowed me to pull out the camera. That is a huge change for now, which hopefully in the next year, the quality of my videos, or at least the visual quality, will go up substantially. So very, very happy with that. All right, let's start with the video aspect. We did a total of 45 videos, which I believe is actually three fewer than I did the previous year. But as I promised at the end of my last video, I've cut out the multi-parters. Whereas before I do one project, chop it into three 20 minute edits uh, and release one of those for three weeks. Now I've gotten much better at my editing, hopefully. And I've generally, except I think for the Midas station, managed to get things out in a single 15-ish minute video. That was one of my goals and I'm really happy that I've been able to do that. Now, the breakup of the videos saw the introduction of, well, three, but only two permanent new segments to the channel. The first were the Fix It Fingers Quick Fixes, and we'll run through those, shall we? Because they are quite quick. I repaired a frame of a picture, you might call it a picture frame, with my Craig G. That was the thing that kicked off. It wasn't obviously going to be a long video, but I thought it was a neat tip, and so Fix It Fingers Quick Fixes was born. These do tend to be more of a handyman -y type stuff, and since what my company started as a handyman business, I thought it was appropriate to chuck them in on the channel too. Then we had a review of the Cabot's Deck Clean. If you were trying to clean the deck, it was quite an informative little product. And then we did the clothesline for the wifey upstairs in the second bedroom that has still worked really well to this day. It hasn't fallen down yet and we use it all the time. And yes, as predicted, I do have to be the one to reach up and hang the clothes on. Uh, my masonry nails review, again, that was using masonry nails in my lovely brick garage when I don't need to support a lot of weight. Then I did a ceiling with resin and this is something that I'm really happy with because it's not something I found a lot of info online about and it's why I did the test using the Feast Watson sanding sealer to put in your inlays really of resin. So you don't need to do it whenever you're using resin, just for when you're doing that detail work and you don't want to bleed along the lines there. It worked really, really well for that. Uh, and then lastly, my sliding window repair. This is something that I've done half a dozen or more times here in the building, being the handyman for my little strata block and we've got 50 year old sliding aluminium windows. So that video is actually doing quite well and I'm very uh, pleased with that too. So they're all the quick fixes. Very, very, very quickly on the non-permanent addition to the channel. Now you wouldn't have actually seen this because they're all private videos. The only way you'll find them is by going and looking for the playlist because they're not at all related to Fix It Fingers. They are under the name of Zalvariath, which is my geocaching name. So I still do get out geocaching from time to time and by far my biggest 
geocaching project for the past 12 months was a series of eight videos related to an adventure lab. Now this won't make sense to most of the people watching this channel, but if you are into geocaching, uh, then I have got an adventure lab started at the Sydney Opera House, which does a tour of history and sightseeing around the city, and I'm really proud of the series. And so if you want to go and find those, then go to the channel and look in the playlist. I can pop a bar up here somewhere, which will point to it. The second permanent introduction to the channel were the Fix-It Fingers Fivers. Yes, I really do love my alliteration. And these are a diary of sorts, tips of sorts, top fives of sorts. Yes, playing the algorithm a little bit of sorts to see what I can share with the community. Basically now, two years in, I've got the confidence that what I have done in that time has worked for me. And there are a lot of things that I have learnt, which are an amalgamation, of course, of everything I've watched on YouTube that I wish was available in one place for an Australian woodworker beginning two years ago like I did. So as the name suggests, the fibers at the moment are for the bog standard beginner information kits and focused on the Australian market, of course, all the tools and things that we can get here. So far, what have we done? We did the introduction video, I did the hand tools, <laughs> yeah, me, hand tools video, uh, the power tools video, which is probably the best one, and the most popular one is on wood and the sorts of woods you'll see. So go do check those out. The last one, it was a joke, folks. There are a few people that didn't quite seem to get that. But my mate Darren from 2 by Forge and What's the Worst That Can Happen, he teamed up with me and we put together a skit comedy based on beards in the workshop. Lovely smooth today for you, mate. Shave just before it. And, uh, well, it's a bit of silly fun, so it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it was pretty bloody hilarious. And huge thanks to Darren for getting involved in that. They're the real new additions to the channel. The only other news I suppose I have is that we hit a thousand subscribers. You might remember me saying this last year. 72 subscribers. Look, it's obviously not very many, to be honest, but I don't really care. And also this. You might have noticed that not one of my videos have I ever done the good old like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, blah, blah. Which in feeling still holds true, but as the channel has grown, I've been putting more effort into growing the channel. And right now I'm hoping that it's at a happy place for me where I'm not fussing about it constantly, but I'm putting enough work into it to make return visits to the channel worthwhile for everyone who's watching. So I'm trying to make three types of videos, really. Videos for myself, which are the sort of long talky ones, like this one, which were reminiscent of how I started out. Videos for my subscribers, which are the woodworky ones, the real down-to-earth sort of backyard crappy builds that I know are not going to be watched by thousands and thousands of people online, but they're the kind of content that I want to watch and it's the kind of projects that I want to make and hopefully my sort of core viewership are going to enjoy. And then you'll spot them quite easily are the videos I make for YouTube. They are the algorithm favoring videos. They're going to be things like tool reviews and comparisons, those sorts of videos which are probably not going to be terribly interesting to my regular core subscribers because they've seen a thousand tool reviews before but they do particularly well on the wider YouTube and that's important for me now because I'm getting paid. Yes, YouTube can be a little bit of pocket money and it is quite nice. No, it's not a lot but if you set up a side account, which is basically what I've done, where all that money that's coming in, all that money, where the couple of bucks each month that come in from YouTube go, then my goal for this next 12 months, or one of my goals for the next 12 months, is to make this hobby pay for itself. So through either working as Fix It Fingers and doing my handyman jobs, some of the AdSense that comes in from Google, and a few other bits and pieces, Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate now as well and that gets a new couple of extra cents every month into the bank account basically any money that's generated through this social media and through my handyman business i want to put into the business so that my hobby what i spend my time doing doesn't cost me anything and that would be great if at the end of the year the books balance that may mean being slightly careful with what i spend uh, for instance i could have really really done with a rotary hammer drill the other week and i chose not to because I don't need that tool specifically, although it would have been useful, I borrowed one instead. So that's a bit of a goal of, of what I'm at to. Um, in terms of the Amazon links, I'm sure you've heard it all before. Basically, 
all of my videos now where I've got the tools and things going. There are links below, and if I think the tool is decent, then I will list it. And to be completely honest, they're going to be mostly for Americans, I'm afraid, because Australian Amazon is kind of crappy. Uh, American Amazon, you can get all the Craig gear, you get all the Makita gear, there's heaps of good stuff and it's at a good, if not better price than retail. And if you purchase through one of those links, I get, again, a small percentage, I think it's 2 or 3% of the sale without costing you any more, and that money goes towards supporting the channel too. So I have changed focus as we've grown and got along, and in terms of that, where are we now? We're at about 1,600 subscribers. Uh, so that is just amazing and my sort of average video view I suppose is about 300-ish thereabouts when the video gets released and to think that there are 300 people who regularly want to come back and listen to the sound of my voice and see what I've been building each week is very humbling and I do really thank the people who uh, do that. You guys don't have to worry about the ads or any of the links or any of that sort of stuff because honestly 99% of that is generated through the videos that I make for the YouTube algorithm. So my Craig review videos and my tip videos and those sorts of things which get a lot more viewership. Speaking of that, what have been my best videos of the year? Well, the bloody Wagoner video continues to reign supreme uh, over the past 12 months and overall it is still my best performing and least favourite video that I have on YouTube. It's clocking up to 72,000 views and that's just absolutely insane. Um, second to that is my K4 versus K5 Craig video. I really want to thank Carbotech actually who have shared the crap out of that video three times now, I think, and every time they do it gives it a really good boost. And I do like that video, I was really lucky to win the K5 and being able to compare the two was great. Um, my wardrobe video, which is, thanks wifey, doing very well. It's my best project video to date, believe it or not. So where I've actually built something, those wardrobe doors, that's going gangbusters, about 20 something thousand views. Same with the dog gate that I built for my brother. So there you go, help people out, build them stuff, goes well. And the third best video is my rip cut video, one of my very first videos as well. As we said, great reviews do good. So a few other little bits and pieces of things that have happened this 12 months. We had Sumo's Scrapwood Projects 2020, which was by far the most fun thing, woodworking wise, that I got involved with this year. Uh, tie that in with my 1,000 subscriber giveaway, which Faini actually ended up winning the square cut for with his hilarious entry. But the number, the quality, and the good times community that was done through that hashtag was just amazing. And that's why we got the Aussie Workshop 2020 hashtag going along. I'm going to try and do a similar, if slightly more chilled out kind of thing. Instructables is another platform that I jumped on this year, thanks to my mate, the Grant Alexander. I've only done the one and it went quite well. I really enjoyed the process, but for me at least, it's quite a time consuming thing to undertake and you've got to have the right project and the right competition to enter to really get my motivation to do it. So I'm hoping to get a few more Instructables out this year because I think they are worthwhile and they're great for promoting your video and also for giving people a closer look and spend more time with the audience and showing it step by step. One of the other exciting things I got up to this year was visiting a few other makers. I went and saw Kilby from Run The Grain who's got a new podcast out, The Daily Placebo, focused on mental health and a few other topics as well. Uh, he's most on Instagram more so than on YouTube, but go and check him out. That was great fun seeing his old workshop, he's moved now. I saw Vic from Down Under Woodworks and that was just awesome. Getting to see a place that you've spent so much time viewing and you think it's like a set. It's no different from anyone else's workshop. I mean, it's a bit nicer than mine, but being there and getting to chat to him and he is exactly how you think he is. He's so down to earth and so relaxed and chilled. Lovely, lovely fella. I actually gave him my old K4 when I got the K5 to replace it. So I will see what he can do with that. And I got to see the chopper. Oh, it's awesome. And he's currently living inside his house. Not sure how his wife feels about that, but hey, I think it looks cool there. And the last one, Dave Stanton invited me on to his live show and I went up to talk about dust masks because I know a little bit about them, did a video on them, I wear them every day. If I didn't know how to wear one properly, then I'd be dead. Uh, however, I think that a lot of people now have a lot more experience with wearing masks, but you're gonna know how to wear them correctly. <laughs> That's a good video, not the most interesting one, but I do like it and it is doing okay on the tubes too. So. I want to visit more makers this year. It's a bit hard at the moment, obviously, but if I can get down to Victoria, there's at least half a dozen blokes 
who I'll be knocking on their door. We'll just have to wait and see how this whole crazy situation of 2021 plays out, I think, before we can think of that. Let's go through the projects which I actually managed to complete. And we have got my workshop shells with the first video that I released, the dog gate made out of Merbu, which I made for my brother, Max, Banner, and Brucey. He's little puppies, and that's cool as. My DIY table saw, which I've only used a few times. That was just a prototype, proof of concept. If I have time and need, I may revisit that this year. Uh, my timber racks up on the shelf over there are not falling down and they've got a crap load of wood on them. So they were fantastic, being a bit overcomplicated as usual. The vac car, um, not bad, this little Sherwood uh, cyclone. I may do a review on that. It's, it's not super, super fantastic in terms of recollection, but it does okay. And it was very, very cheap, so you can't really fault it for that. The clamp rack up here, stolen from Steve Ramsey's woodworking course, the weekend workshop, which I've actually about three or four projects into. I've paid up and signed up to that. I'm really enjoying it. And as it fits into my plan for the workshop, I'm gonna keep building a few more of those too. Gumfire, oh, I should have brought it in because believe it or not, I've got it back. I won't go into the story here. Anyone who followed the social media about Gumfire saw what absolute joy and then disaster and then rejoy it was. And now I've got to find a home for it, basically. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, my wedding logo, which was a complete disaster for my poor friend who commissioned me to do the work and I managed to royally stuff it up. Still looked okay in the end, I hope, but not what she wanted. But, oh well, big learning experience, that project. The wardrobe doors, which I mentioned, are doing really, really well as a video and also haven't fallen down, haven't scratched. They still operate very smoothly and nicely. We've had no accidents with them. Wifey is happy and happy wifey, happy lifey. The fit out of the miter station and the hectic half lap miter station frame, which again, overcomplicated just for the sheer funsies of it. That was a fun project. Frustrating, very long, but very fun project. And we'll take a closer look during the shop tour of that. Wifey's Weed Wagon from Sumo Scrapwood Challenge 2020. That was literally built in an afternoon. Absolutely hilariously good fun and a bit of clickbaity action on there too. It's upstairs now for the guinea pig, although most of the weed has sadly died. Now we'll have to plant some more. Got some parsley seeds. The Coat Rack slash Wireless Charger. Probably my most proud project this year because I don't actually do a lot of what you call normal woodworking. Like nearly everything here is for the shop or a bit of carpentry sort of base. So actually having something designed, built and executed and installed at home, it's the first permanent fixture that I've been allowed to make for the house. And now there's a much longer list of things that are gonna follow on from that. So very proud of that project and basically it showing how my skills have advanced as a woodworker over the past 12 months. I think it's summarized nicely in that build. And then the very last thing was the hallelujah, let there be light. And if this video is anything to go by, I'm hoping that's gonna be just well, something you'll never notice again, but I'm gonna notice every time I walk into the shop. I think that is it. There were a bunch of other videos too, which involved reviews and talking and all that sort of stuff. The AccuCut, my Christmas video, um, a few revisits where I chopped and re-edited a couple of my old, very long videos into shorter videos. And quite frankly, I can't believe, look at this piece of paper, how much I got through this year. In fact, this video here is probably blowing out to nearly half a bloody hour. So there's no time for any Q&A a la Dana Design and Vic, but we might do that in the future at some stage if there is interest. So I'll just share one little piece of trivia which has been staring you in the face. Once upon a time when I was young and fit, I was a first grade New South Wales AFL boundary umpire and I did get to run on the SCG. Fun fact. All right guys, let's get into the shop tour, but thank you for hanging around for this little chatty bit and review. And most importantly, thank you for supporting my channel over the past two years. Some of you have been here for that long, or if this is your first visit to Fix It Fingers, then why not like and subscribe? <laughs> just kidding. If this is your first video, you never would have got through this far. I also just have to squeeze in quickly a big check square to Mark from Dana Design. I apologies, I can't list everyone who supported this channel. You legends know who you are. There are so many of you, but I think Mark has shared just about every single one of my videos and he has done amazing things himself this year. His YouTube channel has gone from strength to strength. And for some reason, he keeps on pumping out my stuff to his supporters. And I appreciate just how much he does for the community in general, but also for me, and he's become a really good mate. And it just shows you what sort of relationships you can build between great blokes 
if you get yourself involved in this side of the woodworking lifestyle here on YouTube. So cheers, Mark. Can't wait till we have a beer together, mate. Okie dokie. Well, I think we're going to be starting with a lot of new things. Firstly, while I had the shop vac, there's that little Sherwood Cyclone unit and a dust cart, which I built for it, which works very, very well. Very happy with that. Under there, the gray bit is actually upside down, my DIY table saw prototype and where it lives. And perhaps the most noticeable change to the shop this year was the hectic half lap miter station. Jolly good fun, a lot of bloody hard work. And of course, sitting on that is my newest and most expensive addition to the workshop this year, but I got a really good price on it secondhand. It's the 10 inch Bosch miter saw, and I might do a review on that sometime in the near future, but sadly they're very, very hard to get your hands on. The 12 inch is still available, and I was lucky because it's basically the only miter saw that I can sit with a 50 centimeter clearance from the wall so that my car can still fit into the workshop every day. My little stop block made out of hardwood and the sliding tape here, all the drawers. Hole saws, they're new too actually. Use those a few times. So yeah, really, really happy. It's completely changed my workflow, this miter station, and is probably, from a workflow perspective, the biggest improvement and addition that I've had in this year. Up there, we've got the workshop blower vac and the Craig corner, where I've got my K5 mounted to the board and the square cut, which I don't need as much. Now I've got the miter saw. And we'll step back here to take the overall look at the workshop cupboards. They were a nice project, really big, learnt a lot, first type of cabinet making. And I filled in the gap in between those with the Steve Ramsey Woodworking for Me Immortals workshop course uh, and using a few of his designs on there. And that's limiting my clamp numbers, but hopefully I won't have to add too many more. On the Makita front, I think the only new Makita that I've added this 12 months is this. And speaking of workflow changes, that little Brad nailer, do 15 to 35 millimeter brads. That's all I really need it for. Didn't want the bigger one. And it's just sensational. My last build, the light boxes, couldn't have done it so fast and so easy with them. Uh, Wifey's weed wagon featured heavily. I'm finding new ways to use it. As always, takes a bit of time to learn. The sticker wall. DIY for knuckleheads, that was the one I just literally put on this morning. And it's nearly filling up. I'm gonna to have to find a new space soon. Got a few bits on there uh, from overseas as well. Couple of nice fellas. If you haven't checked those guys out, then you probably haven't watched my channel before. There's project one. We still have the pegboard up on the wall and my lovely Partag holder still has pride of place. Hasn't fallen over, liking that. You will start to notice there's a bit more wood stored in here than there has been in previous years. That's some reclaimed Western Red Cedar from when we had some Renault works done here. And that is another fairly new addition as well. The other half is there. Uh, track saw, didn't think I needed it. Got it, love it, using it all the time. Swinging around. Now, our week in wood. Mario, the wood father, actually just spoke about how good is having a whiteboard. And I use mine all the time. It tracks all of my strata jobs, the fix it fingers, and projects videos I wanna do, shopping list from Bunnings. There is the wood storage and the bits and pieces from my grandfather's mostly. A lot of that reclaimed wood. That was a huge score for me, uh, getting hands on some of Pop's hardwood and then get a few more projects out of that most definitely. A lovely bike. Uh, one of the problems that I want to fix this year, I think I'm gonna build Dave Stanton's version of a lumber cart, timber cart, I should say, sorry, and clean up that little mess. And here is perhaps the next big phase. Long time viewers will know that there used to be the camping and all the other bits and pieces of crap on a large set of shelves in that particular area. They are now gone. I've got a separate storage room, which I have put them into. And for the moment, I've just got the old workbench that used to be where the miter station is sitting there, the very first one I built. And there are all of my bed slats. And you can just see it hiding in there, my new router sled, which I used in the coat rack video, which is very, very handy too. But I've got wood. I've got a lot of wood. And I want to share my wood with you. Uh, practice that line too much. And an old Dawn Vice. I didn't actually end up doing the gardening job, which I was commissioned uh, for, or was quoting on, I should say. But they let me keep that. It doesn't work. It needs restoring. And in here, 
<laughs> uh, that's a sore elbow waiting to happen. That is all of my sandpaper for my next video. I'm, I'm reviewing 120 grit sandpapers. The old tripod and the new tripod. The rip cut, which still gets a lot of use. Pokemon cans, because I'm a massive nerd. Bundy cans, because I'm a massive bogan. And my slightly crazy garage door, which I managed to repaint the other day when doing the light boxes which I could not be happier with. They are sensational. You might have also noticed, see, proof I'm not filming on my phone. I've got a uh, one, two, three, four new PowerPoints going in as well. So that's gonna help me get a bit more organized in here too. And when the workbench goes in there, I'll have some options for hard power. So there you have it guys, probably my longest video of the year to be completely honest. And I do thank you one more time for hanging around and supporting Fix It Fingers Woodworking. I have so much fun in my shop here and I can't wait to get cracking on another year's worth of projects. Don't forget to check out the other makers who are going to contribute to this hashtag, Aussie Workshops 2020, and you're able to see a whole bunch of different small and not so small spaces and what people can do with them. Thanks again to Sumo for organising that one. If you do ever have any questions, then by all means ask. I'm a pretty open guy, and of course I do sticker swaps too. So hit me up for one of those, even if you don't have your own, I'll send one out to you. That's no problems at all. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook in between videos. And last final shout out is for our Aussie Makers group. The one that Rhino, Ben and Ashley and I started, must be what, a year and a half ago, a bit more now. We've just hit 3,300 members and it's still a really great community of Australian makers sharing ideas. I put some of my stuff up there, but I don't have to these days because there are posts every day. Do go check out the Aussie Makers group on Facebook. All the links and everything I've chatted about today are going to be in the descriptions below. And if you haven't seen much of my stuff, then I do invite you to go and look at last year's video to see how far I've come. And if you really want to scare yourself, check out some of the early stuff. Blah, 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 blah. There was a lot of that. I leave them up there so that every year I can go back and just see how far I've come. I started this channel as literally a video diary, chatting to myself more than anybody else. And while now I'm more conscious of my audience and I do sort of try to make my videos more enjoyable for other people to watch, at the end of the day, why I do Fix It Fingers Woodworking is so that I can see how I've progressed in a new skill from basically day zero, hopefully, to points of improvement and milestones in my woodworking and in my craft of making stuff that gives me joy and gives other people joy too. That's what I'm all about here. And if other people can learn something, then by all means, that's a great thing as well. But it's not the goal of this channel. I better shut up. This is pushing a half hour video today. Thank you everyone once again. I look forward to the next 12 months and what it's gonna bring. And I'll see you around the traps. <laughs>